Most of the comments that I have received have been directed towards my hair in contrast with my skin. Well, many of my friends used to tease me with like, oh, you have dark skin. Do you also dance as well? No. No? <laughs> Hi, my name is Kim. <laughs> nice to meet you. My name is Richie. Nice to meet you. So, what are you studying here at MC? Um, my major is International Studies, and um, for now, I'm just taking general ed classes for this semester. Awesome. What about you? Me, I started off with a communications degree, mm -hmm. um, finished those credits, and now I'm working on my broadcast media degree with a concentration in television. Mm. So, hopefully, when I graduate, I will have both degrees. That's good. That's good. So, where are you from, though? I am from Silver Spring, Maryland, born and raised in Maryland. Um, trying to travel a little bit more, trying to venture out more. And you? I'm from India. I came here four years ago. Wow. What um, part of India? Um, Haryana. Never that's, heard of it. That's near Delhi, near the capital of oh. India. So, it's, it's a big state, though. Um, but not many people come from there. It's mm -hmm. usually either from the south or either from... <laughs> Not from really north, but usually from the south and above the south, India. Is there anything that you miss from home or like what is the difference like from... Well, I'm still missing so yeah. many things. <laughs> so, um, usually the food is the main thing. Uh, I love the food in India. It's because it's also the staple food and I, I've always used to eat that food. But mostly it was the food that my mom made at home. But because the vegetables are designed so differently, they're, produ they're produced so differently there and here, the taste changes when you move to other countries. Even if you make the same dish with the same vegetables in another country, the taste still varies. So I miss that, the taste, and my family. My whole family is there. Only my parents and my siblings are here with me. So I miss them also. Okay. Yeah. What are some things that you've, um, like culture-wise, that you've brought with you, like from India, besides like food and other things like that? Like everything that I got to learn from my parents, uh, I brought that here. So how I speak, how I interact with people. I think my interaction has changed from how, how people interact in India and how people interact here. I think some core values that my parents told me that that I have that is resonating some somewhere in my in myself and I try to follow them what about you me culture wise um, I mean I've grown up here most of my entire life my mother is from Suriname which is a country that neighbors uh, Guyana and Brazil in mm -hmm. South America mm -hmm. and my father is from Brooklyn and his parents have um, um, what is it ties back to Puerto Rico and Italy mm -hmm. so they kind of Ever since I've moved to Maryland, they've kind of left a lot of the cultural pieces out of me growing up. However, as I got older, mm -hmm. I took it upon myself to really dig a little bit deeper, especially with my mom's side of, the, of her culture, since I'm a lot closer to her. So a lot of her um, culture revolves around um, African descent. There's mm -hmm. also a mix of, you know, India. Um, China's also kind of in the mix as well, mm -hmm. Javanese. Um, so that's like kind of like one one place where we kind of have a similarity, which that's, I think is really cool. Like I think that every every human is pretty diverse. Their blood is pretty diverse. It's mm -hmm. not that all our DNA is just one fixed from one fixed um, ancestor. Right. Like as we know that we all um, um, like initially we all were from we all came from Africa mm -hmm. and then moved to other countries, other continents, and then slowly 
like con uh, connected to each other when we were in remote areas and slowly globalized yeah and it's not that as like every human is unique like they are unique but their blood is not unique it's like it's we're pretty, all connected in some way it is we are form. connected that's what i think but that's true though yeah <laughs> Okay, so um, I know that you're, you're born here, but mm -hmm. have you ever experienced any stereotype or racist comments against you? Um, only a few times in my life. Most of my most of the comments that I have received have been directed towards my hair in contrast with my skin, mm -hmm. or um, as well as me just because like I look a certain way I can't be like another like I don't have any other ethnicity or like nationality in my blood mm -hmm. for example I remember sometimes you know how high schools have those um like those what is it those spirit weeks mm -hmm. and I think one day in particular was international day in that particular day I decided to show like my Italian side mm -hmm. and everyone looked at me up and down like you're not Italian you're not this <laughs> you're not that mm -hmm. um I was like, how do you know? I mean, people no, people come no. in all different shapes, sizes, colors. It's like, you can be from anywhere and look like X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, an, that was an interesting experience for me. And a lot, of, um, a lot of comments that I have received have been directed towards my hair. Um, and hair in like the African-American culture is like a really big thing. And my friends encouraged me to go natural. Mm -hmm. And at the time I had a chemical treatment which made my hair straight. Um, so after about a year and eight months, I grew it out and then I finally just cut off the rest of it. And I can say it's easily the best decision I'd ever made for myself. It was also one of those decisions that I had made where I took control of like this part of my body, this part of just like me being a woman, like I'm in control of my hair. Like this mm -hmm. is who I am. This is how like, this is how I feel like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big thing for me too. I think that is big because um, I have also experienced something like that in India uh, because of my color mm. um, it's uh, usually this um, this reasoning this um, thought process that many Indians have um, gone into that the fair color is the superior and I think that also is very influenced from the British Empire which was there for 200 years and it's um, it still resonates in many many people's mind, and I was I was a, a prey for many of them. I was one of their preys. Uh, many of my friends used to like tease me with like, "Oh, you have dark skin, and um, like you <laughs> you doesn't look like us that much." It changed though. But when I came here, I was I was expecting that maybe <laughs> I would experience more stereotyping. Uh, when I would come to America because oh, it's many white people live there. But it was um, a very different experience. Like when I came here, um, I couldn't recall any moment when somebody would have picked on me saying that, oh, you have dark skin or you look like something, you don't look like us. That was a change in uh, my perspective also. I also perceived something different when I was in India. I don't want to say that everyone was bad in India because no, no, not everyone. But I think some people who had naive thoughts mm -hmm. was not seeing everyone as one, but more of they had limited knowledge of people. And that's how they perceived different peoples. How have your interactions been with other people from different cultures on this campus? Well, as I said, uh, it has changed a lot. I was not expecting that people would not stereotype or pick on me saying, oh, you have dark skin. Or it, uh, people have shown, they have not, for, for my perspective, I, I have not seen anyone picking on me. So I, I can say that, like even though they knew that I have different skin, I look different, they didn't, um, um, displayed that on their face. They didn't um, shows showed that on on their emotions. They talked to me as I was a human being, just like them. It was uh, I didn't felt as I was different than them. So that was um, that was something that I applauded. I was um, I was very grateful that not just this campus, but even like since I came here I didn't 
I didn't have any experience like that, any traumatizing experience that I would say. Um, and especially on the campus also, like uh, professors, um, students were very friendly to me. And e even as being a freshman, I didn't feel like I, someone was bullying me or something. It was, yeah. it was um, chill, it was uh, pretty calm, yeah. I'm really glad that you say that too because um, it should be normal that we come across people from all different like backgrounds like it shouldn't be like an, it should be an everyday thing where we come across somebody and it's like they're from here they're from there but it doesn't matter because we're all here to accomplish one goal which is to get a degree and be successful. Yeah, I do agree with that but I think it's more the cause of this problem that people perceive different people as, dif as different. <laughs> is because they have limited knowledge. Mm -hmm. They don't have the full knowledge of, I think, human beings. They just um, use their little knowledge to pick out on someone and um, see, oh, he's different. And maybe they just don't know, but they should know. Yeah, and a lot of it, I do agree, a lot of it does come from lack of knowledge, and that's why it is important to have people from all kinds of backgrounds because the school I also feel like showcases or MC showcases a lot of cultures through through clubs, through activities, through events that we mm -hmm. hold. So I think that the school does a really good job in showcasing everybody that does attend MC. Well, I really enjoyed our talk today. Thank you so much for spending the time with Thank me today, so today to talk. And I hope I get to see you on campus. Yeah, I hope I get to see you too. Thanks again. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you.